Rebecca, formerly known as Port Elizabeth, the friendly and windy city. Often thought of as a city where things move slowly on the surface. But below, creators and pioneers have ambitious ideas and visions. Visions not only to build their own future, but to benefit society, create jobs, and build this city we all love so much. A group of these individuals have gathered and done exactly that. This is the story of Edge Day Hospital. My name's Dr. Cameron McIntosh. So I'm a dual qualified ENT and facial plastic surgeon. My name is Hubert Sich. I'm an architect. We practice under the banner of Imborno Architects. I am uh, Laurie van Oosten. I'm the owner of Renaissance Construction. And my name's Nick Vandenberg. I own Barra Consult, which is a civil structural company. I'm Lance Bright. I'm electrical engineer for the project I'm from company C. Toy. Uh, my name is Marina Smeiring. I'm the founder and MD of MJM Consulting Engineers. Hey, my name is Brad Rosser. I am a director of Johnson & Rosser Quantity Surveys. My name is Andre Strauss. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. My name is Rian van der Watt. I'm the MD of Reef Consulting. I've been in the hospital development space for about 10 years. Specifically in Port Elizabeth, seven years ago I bought the property on which I wanted to build the hospital. But I think something that really changed my whole life was three and a half years ago, I was in the ICU where I nearly died, having had a little cut on my head, they got infected, and I had uh, septicemia and multi-organ failure. And whilst I was there, two things happened. The first is I actually got awarded the license that I'd applied for from the Department of Health here in the Eastern Cape. But secondly, those so 16 days were a real turning point in my life where I realized what actually is patient care. I sat there for 16 days, I didn't see the blue sky. I was in a noisy, terrible environment. And I walked out of there deciding, I'm gonna do something different. And that was the single most important thing about Edge Day Hospital, is let's make surgery as pleasant an experience as possible. No one wants to go to hospital but let's do that as nice as we possibly can. So that is the core of what Edge Day Hospital is about. I actually met uh, Dr. McIntosh uh, in 2014 uh, when he was in um, an offices interested in, uh, in some hospital development work and shortly after he started talking about this project. He essentially indicated that he wanted to build his own day facility and uh, we started talking about what services would be required from our side. Obviously, an understanding that he would have an architect and the rest of the consulting team, and I explained how our service would fit into that. Port Elizabeth being uh, Port Elizabeth, we were actually out on um, holiday. The family and I went to go and have a cup of a coffee, and we bumped in uh, to Cameron. And he uh, looked at me and he said, aren't you an architect? And I said, yes, I'm an architect. And um, a Cameron, being, being a Cameron, a very open guy, said, no, he's, he's going to build hospital. And um, after going through a process, Cameron eventually decided to call a number of architects to give him a proposal around a design together with a brief. Um, and through that, I was the lucky guy to have uh, to have been asked to take the project further for him. So I think it's crucial that um, the architect be allowed to choose who, who he wants man, as a part of his a team. 95% of the people involved in the project are PE-based people. So from the professional side, our hospital, if you want to call them the hospital engineers, they, uh, Rian and his team, absolutely fantastic, up from Centurion, but the rest of the team were all here. Um, the builder, Laurie and Renaissance, I was just amazed at what these guys did. Eh? There was a lot of doubts um, whether we, coming from the residential market, if we can, if we are able to uh, construct a hospital, which we've never done before. Obviously, we've got a competent team with enough depth and knowledge and experience behind us to, to be able to have pulled this off. They were absolutely professional. They, they, the contract didn't have a Saturday. They changed that so that we could also work on a Saturday. And to think that in nine months, 
we came from nothing to a hospital is incredible. It was just before the crash in the market. I think, I think it was about 10 years ago. On the site, there was a house with a garage. It was the most beautiful little house. One of my clients bought this site and we designed a 28 uh, floor building, very upmarket residential building. For the opening, they demolished the, um, the house and left the garage. When we marketed the opening, they needed an 80% pre-sale. We sold most of the units. Uh, the building's penthouse had a, um, a helicopter landing pad on it. If we sold that unit, we would have achieved the 80% pre-sale and we would have gone ahead with construction. And we eventually found a lady just before she signed. Uh, there was the crash in the market and um, the, the project fell away and never happened. So it, it was just um, befitting that somehow we ended up getting involved in, in a project on the same site. The, the brief for the project uh, came I think about two years back when we started with first initial designs um, and it was for a day hospital. Um, normally that's not really an a, a issue but with the slope and the, the position of the building it was, uh, it was quite challenging. So the main, the main aspect was the earthworks and the platforms uh, for the building. So the site's very challenging as you've seen, it's right on the edge of a valley, quite a steep valley actually, with, uh, with rock. So, we got, so right from the start the, the challenge was to try and fit a building on a very small area. Um, so integrating the architectural concept, which, um, which is obviously critical, um, into making it work on site becomes very challenging. Uh, Dr. McIntosh came, came and showed me the facility on one of my visits about six months before uh, construction started. So I actually stood out on the, on the driveway uh, looking over an open piece of ravine at that time. So that's when I saw it the first time. You can never really picture it in your mind, no. What I specifically struggle with is the orientation. You've seen the drawing, you, uh, you know what, what the architect has in mind, but to actually place it in 3D on that spot is very difficult. So no, it, it sort of... As you start see the, the different parts of the construction coming out the ground, you start to say, ah, that's the corner. Okay, there's the office. And you start to, to develop a picture for it. Uh, at the time, I said to Cameron, obviously, this is a, an expensive site to build on. Being a small site, you have to go vertical. It's on a slope. So we found an alternative site for him that was a flat site. What it required was that the, we would then only build a double-story facility, much cheaper, very much more basic, but you need a bigger piece of land. And what we found is that the, the, the cost of the land offset the, the extra over cost for building on this site. And at the end of the day, he wanted this view. And uh, I know he said he'd you know, prayed over the site and, and his, his wishes is obviously being the client, that's, that's what we was granted. And so we tailored the, the costs, it, it met what their feasibility required, and that's how we proceeded.
I mean, if it was a flat site, it would have been very completely different. I mean, foundations are simple. Everything becomes very straightforward. Um, where something like this kind of tests the boundaries a bit um, in every aspect, from an architectural to the structural to the civil. Every discipline gets gets stretched. You get to know the client, you realise that there's, there's this vision and you all get drawn into that vision and you want to make it work. So every obstacle you face, you just know you've got to find a solution to it. We all knew that it wasn't, wasn't possible for any crane because the space was too limited. It was scary at, at, at certain stages with working at the slants, getting to the rock. So it was crucial daily planning, delivery trucks, making sure they're on time and planning the correct daily tasking. That was a major secret of this project, success of this project. Cameron McIntosh, I mean, I've met him on a plane. That's how we got to know each other. Uh, just sitting next to him, we just started chatting, and the next thing I got involved in the project. So I've known him right from the start. He doesn't, doesn't see an obstacle as a, a closed door. It's just a, a, an opportunity to, to face up to it. Dealing with Dr. McIntosh is brilliant. Guy with so much passion, so much drive behind what he believes in. He's got a similar philosophy that I said, there's no problems, only solutions. He had a vision, which he, he executed uh, and he delivered with, with total professional integrity. From, from an engineering point of view, is, uh, you know, we, we, just, uh, we just make a plan and make it work. So our scope covered the full civil engineering services. So that will be water supply, wastewater discharge, stormwater management access road and then the platforms on which the building is built. But the most challenging was the earthworks obviously due to the steep slope, uh, cost is a major factor, uh, the terrain is very rocky so um, you just couldn't uh, excavate uh, as you would please. Um, that was by far the most, most challenging uh, and rewarding aspect of it. The a medical facility has got a very high mechanical and electrical component. So in, in, not only in terms of the, the specifications, it, it's also cost. At the end of the day, uh, if the figures don't work, the, the project doesn't go ahead. Well, the challenge in a hospital compared to offices, anything else we're doing, or shopping centres, is it's a lot more complicated. There's a lot more facilities in it. Um, or stuff from special electronic services, electrical. You have to have full backup of power. Um, electronic services, there's the medical stuff to go in the theatres a lot more. You've got nurse calls, you've got access controls, CCTV, fire detection, everything has to be fully compliant and even the biggest facility, it's all got to be there. Backup power is number one. You've got to have um, UPS uninterrupted power supply for the um, power. So the theatre complex itself where the theatres and everything are, all their plugs, all their equipment is on the UPS. So there's permanent power. Back up to that you've got to have a generator to back up everything we've on this project with the generator for the full power of the facility. So if you're in the theatre complex, power goes off, you've got no realisation that the power's gone off and the generator kicks in. So the easiest way to understand is if you do understand the rest of the infrastructure development team in the same way that the mechanical engineer will think about the mechanical, let's call it the air conditioning requirements of a facility, he will then do all the calculations that, is, that are required and he will then design the air conditioning system in exactly the same way we work with the equipment. So we first understand what it is that the doctor or the nurse is trying to achieve. We then convert that into a technical specification and we then design the solution. So we don't design any of the equipment, but we design how all of them will work together in um, delivering the service that is required. There's obviously some things that you need to have in every hospital and we definitely have those. Um, but then there are special um, devices and, and solutions that are very much tailored to the technology, to the procedures that, that are envisaged that makes this a, really a high-end high facility in terms of those procedures. Uh, as far as day procedures are concerned, as we've already said, they often are short and therefore they sometimes are not that complicated, but there are some of the, the, the technology here that is really um, the best that you can find, there's no doubt about that. As the procedures become smaller and simpler, the technology that is required actually increases. So the, the complexity of the cameras and the services that you will find in this hospital is enormous. Um, and that is what 
what results in the service being able to be, or the procedure being able to be completed in a very short period of time. The knock-on effect is that the, the, that the anesthetic was shorter for the patient and the end result of, of that is that the patient can go home on the same day. Look, I think it's quite unique um, in the sense that, you know, whatever we do in the medical field, the hospital, uh, engineering as such, you know, you've got to fit all of those trades into the same footprint. It's pretty much, I would say, 99% of it would be, um, you know, the same type of systems and technology that's going to go in. Obviously, with time and, um, you know, in the last two, three, four, five years, you know, technology is moving on at a rapid pace. Things are, you know, all, you know, getting more digital. Um, we, in older days, we would have a lot of analog type systems. So we're very excited about the setup at Edge Day Hospital's two theatres. The one theatre is a laminar flow theatre. This theatre is specifically designed to record facial plastic surgery and on top of that rhinoplasty. This is Edgy the Edgehog and I'm going to show you what are the important cameras that we're working with. So Edgy's going to get a nose job. There he is. The first camera is up there giving us an overall view of theatre. From there, we've got a camera that is coming in from underneath the patient, so we can see him or her from underneath. The third camera is right above. We can see what the surgeon's view is. The fourth camera is right over there, where I will be speaking into the camera. And the nice thing about this, we've got two-way audio, so I can be asked questions and I can answer questions, etc. And then the last thing is this absolutely fantastic 4K endoscope system from Carl Stortz. So we can go right onto Edgy's little nose, look at his eyes, see what we're going to do for him. So I'm super passionate about uh, education. I'm super passionate about wanting to record all my surgeries. And we have the facility and the capabilities here at Edge Day Hospital to do just that. So all of these feeds go upstairs to the production room. And from there, we can either produce a video of an operation or it can get sent out as live surgery for educational purposes. So. We're really, really happy with how we've managed to put together this incredible OR1 from Carl Stortz and all these video cameras. So we look forward to being able to have excellent live surgery demonstrations. The accuracy, there, there is hardly any tolerance, especially in the theatres with the with the specialised equipment. There is very, very little tolerance, possibly one to two percent, if that much. So it's it's really technical, and you need to make sure that everything checks out. So it was really tough at times. Um, we depended heavily on our Lord, prayed every day, and. Um, we lifted each other's spirits um, at, at times when, when you feel down, obviously not getting your achievement or your goals for that day or week, and then you recharge for the weekend and, and you knock it even harder when you climb back into the boxing ring. Yeah. One of the times I really had to dig deep was when the entire professional team came to me and they proposed that we move this entire project to another property within the city and I came this close to agreeing with him and I'm so so glad that I disagreed with the professional team on that. Yeah there were a couple of other sites considered um, you know each one's got its merits so going closer going to a space where maybe more into the suburbs or where it's closer to Green Acres but the, the thing there is that you know you lose the the amazingness of this site that it's when you stand out there and you look out over the valley moving the site would have lost all of that and I think that's Cameron's vision was to have something a medical experience that you do not get anywhere else. The builder we had here was a breath of fresh air because his vision was to deliver the best project to the client. It's not often in our today's construction world that we're able to get a project completed on the time. 
you know, the word on the street was that we, we, we won't be able to make it or, or do it as it's just the impossible time frame. So um, it, was, it was a lot of faith and trust and a lot of pride riding on this. It was almost the all-in scenario. But yeah, it, it, was, it was really planning and daily communication with the professional team. And um, we managed to pull it off. <laughs> Failure wasn't an option. Meeting Cameron the first time, I knew we're dealing with a special person. A um, lot of drive in him. His vision was as clear as daylight. And to um, not to let him down or the team down was the main focus. So, the, so COVID certainly, I think the start was delayed slightly by, by the, um, the lockdown. When we did start, the end date shifted, but probably not as much as the, the delay. So the, 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 the contractor had to really um, work quite hard to, to maintain the program. Their, their site safety, I mean, their record, safety record is impeccable. I think they got 100% um, on a number of occasions, so, which is also incredible. And on a site like this, the site was neat, controlled, and the people on site were good. I mean, people wore all the stuff they had to wear, the PPE, they adhered to those protocols. And, and I, but the, the, the management team from the contractor were, were quite, were very strict on that. It was, it was daily screening, making sure that everybody is healthy. If a guy's got a sniff or a cough or whatever, the checks were done and we made sure that everybody gets checked twice a day. Um, and then obviously sanitizing, doing all the checks. So it was really a, it was really a team effort. Um, and then we encouraged the team, if they feel ill, rather stay at home, be safe. Not compromising the safety of the rest of the team as well as compromising the program. Uh, as you know, a P is in a severe drought, uh, supply dams are running empty. So the functionality of having a ball and having the option to supply additional water uh, to the facility is obviously uh, in, incalculable. The, the, the problem arises when there's no water. So, you know, it's obviously expensive, the ball is expensive, the pump station, the treatment's expensive, but if you don't have any water, how much are you prepared to pay for water if none is available? From the first day I ever set foot on this plot, um, right up until the first time we started working nine months ago, it was just a place where you just like, whew. and that was the brief towards Hubert and his team. Let's build something that people just walk in and they can just say, whew. What started out as a dream has now become a reality. Let me take you on a journey through this new multidisciplinary two theater 15-bed day hospital. From the onset, you are greeted by spacious parking bays and a contemporary exterior engulfed in the surrounding views of the beautiful Barkins Valley. Working on a sloping site with a limited platform to establish a footprint, the architects were able to float the building over the edge of the valley by introducing a delicate steel cantilever support system. This not only optimizes the flow of the hospital operations, but also creates the feeling of the building floating over the landscape and enhances the spectacular views and overall patient experience. Patients and visitors enter through a northeast facing entrance which ensures that the arrival space is warm and welcoming. Timber slats create a strong connection to nature and act as a privacy screen while filtering the north light and glare. The reception area greets you with minimalist yet warm finishes and the latest technology. All health and safety protocols are executed with our state-of-the-art no-touch facilities. As patients enter our spacious wards, they are surrounded by a view of the beautiful Buckins Valley. We start off at our children's ward, Elephant, hosting four beds. Our two private wards, Dolphin and Gala, come kitted out with the most up-to-date equipment. Next is Thorsi. It hosts six beds. And finally, our Eagle Ward hosts three beds. We now move to a sterile environment where patients receive the best pre- and post-operative care possible. We have a fully equipped laminar flow operating theatre and fully interactive digital theatre. 
Boasting all the best and latest equipment, our digital theater is where we can live stream our operations. Moving upstairs, you can't help but notice the beautiful art against the wall and the impressively designed space above. Dr. Cameron McIntosh runs his practice from Edge Day Hospital and this is his reception and waiting area. His rooms and cone beam photography facility are located upstairs. Next to that is a medical spa where procedures such as Dermapen 4, facial fillers, manicures and pedicures and many more are done. Negotiations with the surrounding neighbors and the Department of Environmental Affairs resulted in the relaxation of the site building line, which then allowed for the full accommodation to be catered for on two levels. This ensured that the neighbors' views of the valley were preserved. A basement level has been created, which will house a future coffee lounge. This level nests gently in the environment and enjoys full views of the landscape and vegetation. Vibrant sounds of bird life can be heard throughout the day and enhances the connection to nature. It is said that buildings should be regarded as a documentary of their time. Edge Day Hospital creates a space where people can connect to the environment and experience the healing qualities associated with nature. While architectural styles may change over time, the functionality and spectacular views that this building creates will remain timeless. Thank you for joining us on this tour of Edge Day Hospital. The fact that these, that these massive slabs are suspended in mid-air and you've got to hold them up and they're hanging over the others, so you've got to strut them and, and come up with different solutions. And it's got to look good. If it was up to the engineer, you would just stick a whole bunch of columns down and it would work. But it might not look very nice. To make a building aesthetically pleasing with the architect, you've got to work closely with them. If you've got nice architects like we have got and very good architects, it becomes a lot easier to work with them because their vision, our vision of putting the lighting in together makes the building come alive. Because it's not a 24 hour hospital, um, and it is only a day hospital, at night time, it doesn't have to be active and on. You don't have to invite guests into it. It's not like you're doing a shopping centre, a restaurant. We have to have very bright lights so people know where to go. You know, the lighting internally had to be obviously compliant for the facility it is. Then in the theatres, again, doctors need to see what they're doing. There are the theatre operating lights, which is the big major lights that came from Hoots. But you still have to have general light in the theatre that is all the way around with least shadowing. There's a technique to do that. We had a special lights that I've designed before for theatres that we developed that doesn't give much shadowing in the theatres itself. And then the aesthetics of the internal of the building, we still have to work with architects again. Um, up the staircase, there's lights going up there under the handrail, which is one of the first things done for a long time in this town of ours. Um, and the aesthetic lighting inside, you have to have it again in, internally that people feel comfortable, but again, bright white light that it feels clinical and clean. Yeah, so our responsibility falls within you know, I, I like to say, you know, architect creates a building and a space and, you know, it gets the feeling of, of everything. But we make the building alive. You know, so we bring power to the building. Uh, we provide all the backup systems, UPS systems. Um, you know, probably hospital is one of the areas where, you know, from an electrical point of view, you know, you got, it's got to have quite a lot of intricate systems. So theatres becomes a, a pretty much a, a unique uh, scenario where you have very specific filtration to create, um, you know, sterile environment. So, P's got the expertise to undertake projects like this. And I and I just think that that we have the ability to do it, huh? And it and it mustn't be overlooked. I think it's pretty much you know, the negativity around Port Elizabeth is uh, is is probably misplaced, you know. So I, 
uh, they say it's the one town where your wife comes and she cries when she comes here and she cries when she goes away, you know, so. A specific moment on the site it was one morning early I was on site. The deck was being packed to be cast for the first floor. I had a cup of coffee in my hand, stood on the deck, looked at this beautiful view out there. Turned around to see the whole construction team praying over the site in the morning. Basically going down on one knee, but for the right reason. And when I went to the contract office to realise that this this happens every seven o'clock every morning on the site. And I think this is why the site was such a, was a success. Finished in time. One of the first sites in a long time that's been finished on time. And that was just from that moment on. I understood why it was working. And I brought this little lock along. Because this is the lock that had, there was a chain around the gate. And I, I had the key for the lock, but it didn't work. So I went home and I got some uh, Q20. It didn't work. I eventually went home, got a hacksaw, and I hacksawed the chain off this lock. And I left it hanging on the gate and I went inside and I, and I just prayed for God's blessing over the project. And about 20 minutes later, I came walking out again. And this lock with a chain were lying on the floor and it was open. And I had the key in my pocket. So I don't know how that happened, but I closed it and it's closed. And it's just for me a memory that it's, it's helped me tremendously over the years with knowing that God's hand is on the practice. And if he can do that to locks, he can do it to to this project. From pouring the, the last cube of concrete, from breaking ground, from passing the particle test um, in, in the theatres, to handing over to Dr. McIntosh. To put it in a nutshell, it was, every day was special. Every day was hard, it wasn't easy. Um, but to, uh, to see the end product getting together and, and walking away from it was really rewarding. So it was it was special. The most special thing for me is, is uh, if you walk through those doors in the wards, um, you know, certainly the first time um, you, you, you actually, when the wards were kitted out, you could appreciate the, the view. Uh, obviously, everybody's standing on the hill here and say, oh yeah, it, the valley is nice. And, but once you're inside the facility and it's kitted out, you know, that certainly does stand out for me, is, is uh, certainly the the location and how you know the views were honest uh, you know in terms of the, the patient facilities and areas um, I think that's quite unique I haven't seen that in any other setting uh, many other hospitals I think it's, it has just been a really unique project it's been a, a project who had a builder onto but the one end he came in right at the end your client to both extremely energetic, both extremely positive people. Um, and so that just helps me as an architect to do my best job possible. I think for Kabecha, it's definitely a landmark, um, not national, but international. Understanding um, what Edge Day Hospital is about, um, it's definitely going to be a draw card. We don't have a table mountain. We don't have vineyards, but we have uh, Edge Day Hospital. <laughs> I went out wide. I went to 80 people in the city and I've been laughed at and there have been 10 of my colleagues, friends and specialists, if you want to call it that, who have actually brought in on the project. But they put their hands up and they've put their money where their mouths are and that's why Edge is here, because of those people. He has always had at the heart of it that the people of Port Elizabeth would benefit that the building isn't owned by a large corporate company, that it's operated and owned by the doctors. We had an opening function um, for our 26 staff members, and this is 26 permanent jobs we've created. When the staff had to introduce themselves and say where they're from and what they're doing at the edge and why they want to work here, there wasn't a dry eye in the audience. And you know, they had people saying that I've never had a job in my life. And that's what it's about, eh? you know, we, we we can give lip service to stuff, but can you actually do it? So it's great, you know, we've got all the shapes, and sizes, and languages, and colors of South Africa in the hospital. It hasn't just benefited Cameron and the doctors, it's, it's benefited the, the, the people. And, you know, with COVID times, we've chatted around this, uh, I think that he definitely has provided something now that um, is going to be a big, there's a big demand for it.
Family is very important. So the support team at, at, at home was exceptional. My wife is part of the business. Uh, she does procurement and runs the financial side of the business. And then I was privileged enough to have my son here uh, with me from the start of the project to completion. So it was a lot of learning and um, for him, my son Lawrence, and, and myself as well, to, to have a different dad, boss scenario, leader scenario in, in a different environment. So it was, uh, it, was, it was a good experience, I think, for all of us. So I know that if it wasn't for my wife, Colleen, and the kids, this wouldn't have happened. They've been amazing because dads had to put in big hours. I mean, I've been overseas many times researching, looking at hospitals, um, working late at night to bring this dream about. And if it wasn't for the support of family, we would never have had this done. You know, two words is not enough. You, know, you can't describe something like this. You can't, you can't put it down to two words. <laughs> two words is perhaps uh, a difficult one. I think excellence is, is, is perhaps one. Impressive and world class. One word, fantastic. I can't describe the project in two words. I have to do it in three words. Living the dream. Um, this is his first hospital. Having a chat with him, I don't believe it's going to be his last. I can't wait to do the next project. We want to roll this out. This is a unique, unique new benchmark of how hospitals should be run. And I'm hungry for more of these.